Okay, it's 7 p.m. time to kick off uh, today's uh, very interesting discussion that we're really going to have. And on a day when markets have been down two days ahead of the budget, that should be really a good uh, point to really be discussing what is going on, how to look forward to it, not just in the short term, but also very, very long term, for which I have a very, very interesting uh, guest with me, Ritesh Jain. Uh, for those who are uh, familiar or not familiar with him, he's been the former CIO at BNP Paribas, Tata Mutual Fund, managing billions of dollars, and uh, then moved on to Canada, where he manages Pine Tree Macro, uh, global asset allocation theme uh, investing fund, advisors Eastern Financials in wealth management in India, and recently launched NRI's Then, a platform for NRI's to participate in India's growth story. Uh, the mood, mood question that I get now is, okay, fine, if you think the markets are going to rise, but what about now? Are we going to get a near-term correction? Can I buy 1,000 points lower? Isn't this all overdone? You know, one way run in certain sectors. Shouldn't uh, you know we get a correction first and then only invest, uh, not really enter the markets now? This Thanks, Roy. Uh, so I am I'm clearly, um, so there are two views over here. Uh, when we take a talk about ma making of a bubble, a bubble which is not supported by fundamentals burst very, very, very fast. A bubble which is supported by fundamentals have a little bit longer uh, runway. I believe, and there I have a little bit difference of opinion with you on the budget side. I believe governments have become, governments and regulators have become very powerful post-COVID. And it is not only in India. We should not be looking at how um, Indian government is behaving. It is happening across the world. Government is now 35 to 40 percent of GDP creation. You might be surprised to know that in France, 45 percent of the GDP comes from government expenditure. In India, also, it is closer to 25 to 30 percent. In US, 35 to 40 percent. So essentially, one third of the GDP in the in the Western world actually is attributable to government whims and fancies government's expenditure in a particular sector. Government can actually decide to take money from one part of the economy and give it to some other part of the economy. Having set the table over here, I have been for the last four years following this approach and I will continue to follow this approach till the time the government expenditure as a percentage of GDP goes down. Unfortunately, that might or might not happen for the simple reason uh, everybody loves power and government loves power more than anybody else. And once you have given them the power, which you gave them a very clear power after COVID, they have not been giving, they have not given back this power. They are using that power to uh, actually decide the winners and losers in the economy. So with that being said, I believe that India is, uh, is, is going to embark on a kind of a bubble where there are two outcomes remaining over here. Either the government does not do anything now, and we continue to pile on this particular bubble, what we are talking about the markets, which I think you also wrote day before yesterday, and completely agree with you, except for the timeline part, that everybody continues to pile on this bubble. The fundamentals do not catch up. And at some point of time, if the higher the bubble goes, the more liquidity that bubble requires for sustaining the bubble. Forget the prices going up. If you have to maintain the higher prices, you need more and more money just to sustain those prices. So if you do not have the fundamentals catching up, then at some point of time, this bubble will burst. It is possible that this bubble burst over the next three, six months. It is completely, it is possible. I am, I am going into the other direction. I believe that this bubble has a longer runway in front of us. And that is where my recommendations are coming to anybody who's coming on NRI's and platform. Do not invest lump sum in market now. I believe that we are going to go for 12 to 18 months or it could be 18 to 24 four months of slumber. Government is going to prioritize production over consumption. Government is going to prioritize production over uh, speculation. And I am basing my view on what I've been seeing Indian government is embarking upon. India is actually now following the South Korean models of chai balls. And which is obviously, you know that after a North South Korea war, North Korea is still there, but South Korea has become a global powerhouse. 
I believe India is also exactly going the same way. And if I were to uh, study the history of uh, South Korea, then they actually curtailed the consumption, speculation, they actually incentivize production over consumption. So this budget becomes a very important uh, thing for me. And that is possibly the reason that you have started to see nervousness in the market. In this budget... So which, which year which years were this, uh, Ritesh, which you are referring to for the chai balls? So between 1960s to 1990s, uh, there still continues to be only seven chai balls, actually. Okay, okay. when we talk about Daewoo, uh, Hyundai's, uh, there are, what, four or five of them uh, more, uh, LG. In Japan, they are known as Kiritsu but which is a very small part of the economy in uh, South Korea was actually, actually, and Mr. Swaminathan Ankulish Arir has just written an article on the same subject just a month back. I think you should read that article. So you are going to give the power yeah. to six, seven, eight people, you know, six, seven, eight, the, your champions uh, to take the country forward, to take the country forward in such a way that you help them in a, a, every particular way and tell them, you know, go ahead, rule the world. Okay. We will help you with everything. So that is what exactly I think the Indian government is trying to do. But if I were to go by the South Korean models, they actually curtailed consumption. They curtailed speculation. They they actually uh, in massively incentivized production. Now, again, I'm going to one more number, which I have been working on. India has India is seeing a jobless recovery. India is seeing rich people or people who are wealthy staying in metros and there has been no wealth outside the metros for the simple reason we went through for a different model which was the service sector okay uh, we did not uh, go through the manufacturing route every poor economy before becoming rich first goes for manufacturing because manufacturing creates five times the more jobs than services but since India was not having physical infrastructure it was having digital infrastructure. We went through services route, and now you are finding services as a major part of your benchmarks, major part of your economy, manufacturing only 15% of your uh, economy. That has led to, you know, jobless recovery. But I believe we are going the other way around. Now, whatever we missed over the last 10, 15 years was the manufacturing part, is what we are going to get into. Now, manufacturing is very wide. We cannot get everything, you know, we cannot compete with China. Uh, I, that is for sure. We cannot compete with the China at all. But we can, they are at $10,000 per capita GDP. They are leaving some things for us when they were $3,000 per capita GDP. What they were producing, we would be producing that, but that will lead to more. Uh, let me put it this way you don't manufacture Apple, Apple phones in India, you assemble iPhones in India, or you assemble iPhones in China or even toys. So all those things will start happening. That's why coming back to your bubble part, over next to 12 months, I believe policies will be made in such a way that market goes into a slumber, that you have the fundamentals catching up to the prices for this bubble to have a very longer runway. So there are only two parts. I think, uh, Rohit, in your latest uh, long shot, I actually agreed with that thing where you said that over the next three, six months, either you can have this thing or you can have a longer time horizon over there. I do not have any price in mind because that is not my domain. My view is that, am I looking at a market which is going into time or price correction over the next 12 to 18 months, where we will forget about, you know, uh, in the next six months, you will have half of the listeners on India charts, uh, you know, this Twitter spaces or one third, because the market has completely flattened out, nothing happening, uh, speculation is out of the market more money is leaving the market and going into the real economy because money can either go to uh, equity markets or money can go to real economy, create jobs. So policies are made in such a way that more and more money is shifting to real economy, creating jobs, sucking away the money from the markets. So this is my preferred scenario, which will happen to 12, 12 to 18 months, which will reset the timelines, which will reset this bubble, which will have it a longer runway. If I'm wrong, then possibly in the next two, three, six months, this bubble will go parabolic at some point of time and will burst itself. All bubbles burst. There is absolutely no doubt. Either you can have a very violent bursting of the bubble or you can have deflation of the bubble. I believe that we are headed for the second time, but first we will get some support from the fundamentals for this fundamentals to catch up to this bubble. So you don't think that what we saw in 2021, 2022 was that kind of a 
pause that we saw in the overall uh, trajectory because in that time period even as earnings continued to grow uh index level valuations have not expanded surely we've seen it in certain sectors whether it's defense whether it's uh, railways or you know where people are generally concerned uh maybe some of the mid caps but uh, it was uh, uh, not across the board so therefore you had sectors like autos pharma fmcg which actually consolidated between 22 21 uh and we didn't see a valuation expansion uh, overall at an index level or a or a market level is that correct so i am not even considering that into account for the simple reason 2021 to 2022 i do not believe that that was a period where uh, we could say that fundamentals were catching up to the bubble actually fundamentals are not even catching up to the bubble now fundamental so you are you are actually expanding the pe multiples and that is what normally should happen in a sector where you see earnings coming in the next 5 years but you do not wait for 5 years you actually make it uh, you know you actually have to price it today rather than uh, you know wait out for 5 years for those earnings to come in and secondly a smaller problem is coming in in india where our benchmarks are 55% made up of services okay but uh, the entire go- but the government is saying if the my gdp grows by x i want my manufacturing sector to grow by 2x now that manufacturing sector is only 12 15% of the portfolio so i believe only in manufacturing part of the market is where the bubbles have uh, where the uh, you know the expansion has happened ahead of fundamentals catching up every other part of the market i think is perfectly valued at this point of time so manufacturing would be a very very wide uh, basket right because mostly people only think of the make in india you know electronics and so on there must be many other sub segments of manufacturing which is what you are referring to uh, that are not uh, yet recognized uh, in terms of size by the market cap or in the industries and so on i'll give you a sm- small example uh, and all of this started my view started becoming a little bit more broad when uh, russia ukraine war happened and russia's foreign exchange reserves were confiscated i've talked about this many times now i will not go into that gold part at all that's a separate thing altogether at that point of time every country started thinking about how can we bypass dollar no i'm not talking about de-dollarization also so here is where you know uh, uh, two years back uh, you know we started taking oil from russia and whatever oil you took you give them inr because you cannot uh, give them the payment through swift now there was sergey lavrov uh, i'm giving you this example because this example will happen across a lot of different um, countries and it will tell, tell you about what new sectors are coming where the you know which are not even in our uh, which we are not even thinking about today so what happened is that uh, you know uh, since we don't have much to export to russia we cannot compete with china on manufacturing a lot of things so what we did was uh, we gave inr to sergey lavrov you know uh, sorry russia okay here is your 40 billion dollar equivalent to inr lying with a bank in india we will not allow you to buy indian assets simply because you are a sanction but you can buy goods and services from india over the last one year now now it's a very small part and just look at the base over the last one year uh, engineering exports to russia are up 130% 130% from nowhere nowhere a particular sector came into the market you know a, a particular sector all because there were two countries which had to trade among themselves okay and they did not have a choice so even a sector which was not a global level competitive sector okay global level competitive sector still just because russia had to use that inr to buy indian assets okay uh, sorry indian goods and services actually gave lot of orders to this particular sectors and you are having engineering exports going up 130% secondly now just recently i do not know why people are not taking it seriously we've just given a 25000 crore line of credit to sark countries this is inr this is not dollar uh, this is inr so we are just saying to them okay this is 25000 crore line of credit line of credit means you still have to pay back money in 15 20 years but you bangladesh sri lanka you can actually buy goods and services worth 25000 crores from india when was this kind of uh, you know Or let's say africa we are going to africa and we are having a swap uh, we have we are giving inr lines to lot of uh, uh, african countries to buy goods from india so we are interna- internationalizing inr we are internationalizing so many new sectors which were never there because 
we know the demand of indians we do not know what all these countries are looking to buy from india whatever they are looking to buy from india are the new sectoral winners you are sending uh, pinaka missiles to armenia now pinaka missiles is becoming a very very uh, you know it's now being accepted across the world at, at least in at, not in the tier 1 countries tier 2 tier 3 countries which do not want to get into the fight between uh, us and china and they are finding re- uh, india is an acceptable face simply because india does not threaten anybody and you are having ma- orders being put for those missiles to india now germany which was germany it is actually an irony germany is actually buying bullets from india to send it to ukraine so a massive amount of massive uh, order has come for uh, making bullets in india so we are supplying to uh, ukraine and you are even supplying to russia so can you see that we are talking about completely new sectors out of nowhere <clears throat> suddenly coming into the war and these are the sectors which are actually going to be massive massive new winners in the coming years irrespective of your benchmarks and 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 they uh, they are in the listed space there so a lot of them are in listed space obviously <laughs> and you can see the when you see the you know unless you go down first look at macro then go down to the micro level you will not be able to understand and people keep on telling me for the last 7 months you know qips are happening qips are happening okay don't invest in those companies but there are a very large universe which doesn't want to dilute which actually doesn't want to dilute which is very happy holding a 70 75% promoter stake over there and they are very confident about it i have it across four five sectors is where i'm my bandwidth is limited uh, rohit first of all so on my limited bandwidth and my macro understanding i can go only to a very small part of the market which where i built up capabilities yeah. where i built up knowledge and this is very very happy i am willing to keep it with that because i know it's a decadal theme so if it contracts by 10 15 20 30 percent how does it matter to me till the time my view changes so so can we can we actually get into okay before i before i ask you uh, what what sectors there are just one more one more macro point so in the beginning you mentioned about government involvement in uh in the markets and that sort of reminds me of what happened uh, uh in the us say in the 40s to 60s uh when you know government involvement increased they were spending a lot more you had multiple inflationary cycles so that is something i tried to discuss a lot in the uh, long shot report as well that you know that back and forth keeps happening the only thing in the case of india because i was wondering whether we are around you know 5 10 years behind the us in the cycle did we really go through what they went through in the 2010s and uh, if we really need private sector capex and credit to pick up do we really need lower interest rates so my that is where my thought of you know government slowing down in, at least in india cutting back on expenditure because debt our government debt to gdp post covid shot up to 90% now it's back to 80 something they may want to bring it back to a 70 something before they spend more so they really want to incentivize uh private sector investment and that crowding out uh, if it goes away would actually bring down interest rate so that is sort of what i was trying to think i don't know whether it fits uh, in your model or how you are thinking about government spending and the rate environment in india actually government of india is not even uh, you know uh, uh, it is not even uh, leading to contraction of private sector borrowing at this point of time but let me tell you a new thing which is happening globally globally the risk is shifting from the banking sector because banks have become too big to fail and it is happening in us it is happening in europe all this money for big private capex is actually coming from private credit market private credit market has has actually gone by leap grown up by leaps and bounds i am not having number i if i knew we were discussing this thing i would be having some number <laughs> i have couple of friend working for global pension funds they have carved out completely different units for global private credit so all because banks are asking 10 15 20 different questions because now they are uh, ring fenced by the central bank or central bankers think that you know they should not be taking excess credit so why why are we worried about uh, uh, bank credit that banks will be you know uh, crowded out by the government spending the 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 new money which i am talking about whether it is in us or whether it is in europe uh, it is all coming from private credit 
and all this private credit is funded by funded by global sovereign fund global uh, global pension funds and there is massive amount of dry powder lying around over there that will happen in so india is, is there a key that will happen in india also mm -hmm. We will get go global private credit will be funding India's India's capex story. It will not be the banks. Banks don't have that kind of money. So then, what we are looking at basically is a lot of uh, foreign debt uh, participation in the Indian market, sort of pushing the uh, yield curve over here. Is, is that is that what we should be thinking? Or that INR becomes a kind of uh, you know. Uh, our macros you just talked about macros in 2004 to 9 also until 2019 our macros were very volatile you couldn't uh, you know couldn't yeah. take a call whether on inflation or whether gdp growth rate now you are seeing that across brics countries currencies are becoming much much more stable you know you can look at inr i know there is a heavy hand of uh, rbi over here <clears throat> but honestly no central banker is now worried about getting into the list of us which comes out with currency manipulator every year slowly slowly we are not even thinking about what uh, what uh, other things about us or whether wto thinks about us and putting trade and tariff barrier is wrong we don't care about that thing and that is how the global order is is unwinding in that kind of environment if my uh, if i have a stability on global macros i am growing growing at 12 13% nominal gdp i am having 4 5% of inflation Yes, massive amount of global credit will come to India. They will not be worried about currency depreciation. Actually, over the last six, seven years, where has Indian currency depreciated against Canadian dollar, British pound, Euro, JPY? Only USD is the only last man standing. Which, uh, if President Trump comes, he's already told you what he wants to do. <laughs> And again, yeah, that is, uh, Anyways, that is, again is, I'm going back to yeah. in a democracy, you should not be looking about what a single person is saying, but that single person mm. is going to decide the fate of a lot of industries in US. So, so this really this reason that uh, that big so when people talk of the dollar and de dollarization or they talk about uh, 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 the dollar standard moving. Uh, you know, one thing. One thing is, of course, that US needs. So this takes me to the question and the big debate. You've probably also mentioned uh, Luke Groman so many times. We discussed Brent Johnson many years ago uh, when I was at Sher Khan, and whether that debate is really settled because they were they are essentially saying the same thing in the end. But it was all about whether the dollar goes up first and then comes down. Brent still sticks to his view that you know the dollar has to go up. Though we got the spike in 2022. Uh, so my question is, are we done there, first of all? And second, if we are done there because the U.S. has to finance its credit and, you know, uh, keep expanding uh, liquidity and we have a weak dollar environment and we are already seeing that liquidity comes to uh, comes to India and that credit comes here. And the second thing which uh, uh, with Trump and probably which is already in motion uh, and I don't know to what extent since you are uh, you are situated in that part of the world, you would know. To what extent is this uh, idea of U.S. taking back production or manufacturing uh, to itself really happening? Uh, and that would be the other big trigger on the dollar, right? So uh, what Trump is talking about, to what extent is that already happening? Does it, is it that simple? Is it like, you know, you, you can just flip a switch? Uh, I would have answered that question negative in a negative way before COVID. But again, I will go back to the same my argument. Government is deciding winners and losers. Finally, that might or might not happen is a separate thing altogether. Like five years down the line, this industrialization, if, if US starts, it might or might not fructify for a different reason. But you will not wait for five years to invest. Right? Markets are a discounting mechanism. Yeah. And in a, in a time of social media, due to democratization of information where you, me, and everybody listening on this call have the same information at the same point of time, will not wait for five years, right? Now you should listen to, uh, it's today when you listen to President Trump, I had actually written about, uh, you know, because I have read his, uh, ultimately for me, investing is all about people these days. What are What is this person thinking? And he's not a dictator, he's a leader of a democratic government. And I would say the same thing about some other countries also. He's very clear about what he wants. He's saying dollars should not, you know, 
dollar should not be constraining us from bringing back our industry. In 2001-2002, you allowed China to become a part of WTO. I have to go to this history lesson to explain you the future. Sorry, Rohit. It will take two, three minutes. Yes, no, definitely. That's, I think, very, very enlightening. We should not have allowed uh, WTO. China was not ready for a WTO because it was not market economy. But due to pressure of U.S. corporates who wanted increase in profitability, Bill Clinton actually bent backwards and there is a beautiful video on that particular thing you you can listen to it uh, separately uh, he bent backwards and those jobs were shifted to uh, china and that led to rust belt that led to massive amount of job losses of blue collar workers in uh, us and everything went to china in spite of not being a uh, market economy they kept their currency lower they flooded us and rest of the world with goods and services when president trump came for the first time he still listened to bureaucrats but he was very clear that he has come because of the votes of those people who say enough is enough we want our jobs back his second term is when in the first term including mr mr modi also did the same thing he listened to the bureaucrats president trump also listened to the bureaucrats in the first time but he learned from that thing Unfortunately, President Trump did not get that second term and it was Mr. Biden. And now he's getting his second term and he's learning from that, that you should not listen to bureaucrats. You should go ahead and do what you think is right. So he is going to go ahead and do what is right, which is which you can have a very good uh, understanding when you listen to Senator J.D. Wands. President Trump has got in himself as a vice president, somebody who's a mini Trump. So there is no there is no checks and balances over here. There is nobody for a counter uh, opinion who will give it to Mr. Pre Pre Trump because Trump and JD Wands think exactly same thing. And tomorrow, if Mr. Pre Trump is not there, JD Wands will do have exactly the same policies which President Trump is there, which is industrialization, getting our jobs back, creating a trade and tariff barriers, and that is very and dollar. We should not be exporting dollar. We should be exporting goods. We should not be doing dollar and that means lower interest rates lower dollar if that means we have to do a yield curve control go ahead and do the yield curve control we have to make sure that japan appreciates its currency china appreciates its currency mexico which has got uh, some com uh, some corporates which are investing in uh, mexico to take advantage of nafta they should not be in mexico they should be coming to us not in mexico and he will create enabling conditions which is already happening in uh, in clean and green energy sector. You can already see the numbers over there, but it will happen in broader part of the market, which he believes, okay, is the one which should be getting that kind of investments. And for that, if you need investment in your country, you do, you need lower currency because let's say your currency is uh, appreciates by 20% against Taiwanese dollar. Taiwanese will find it extremely difficult to invest in US. US TSMC will say, how can I invest in US? Your currency is already, you know, so costly against my currency. South Koreans will say exactly the same thing. Okay, so you need a lower currency for those people to have more bang for the buck. And that means you will want those people to invest in your country. So in that kind of environment where the reserve currency of the world says, you know, it was good till the time it lasted. I do not want to be the bully in the world. I do not want my seven, eight aircraft carriers roaming around the world, keeping the shipping line safe. I want my jobs back. And for that means if I have to sacrifice the dollar, I will go ahead and sacrifice the dollar. So I guess that's a very, very big uh, macro change really coming our way. And when these structural things happen, they are usually multi-year in, in focus. And when I think of a weak dollar and, and, and you know, lower interest rate, it simply signals in my head that this, uh, this triggers a huge liquidity flow. And, uh, uh, and which is why I had to keep both scenarios in mind that uh, can we really get a correction which is more stock and sector specific while money will continue to flow into other areas. But... Uh, Surely, if we if we get a twelve to eighteen month consolidation, it it uh, uh, gives better opportunities not just in some but across the board. 
going back to to uh, to the segments as you were mentioning uh, you know what are the sectors that could be specific i also saw couple of data points uh, uh, you know in your uh, in your presentation about how the manufacturing thing would really uh, unfold so what are what what are you really thinking in terms of what segments uh, or what sectors uh, really play here as we shift from you know away from services and then services but services doesn't go away it's just that it's just that we need to increase the manufacturing pie right that is what we are really saying here so services will not go away right that is absolutely right yeah. now before that i will come to the flows part because that is very important we have not even started seeing nri flows into india and that is exactly the reason i started a year back i started nri zen unless you come to western world now if you come to western world 7 8 years back before covid and if you come to western world now you will find a complete a very stark difference now okay these are the economies which were vibrant economies yes they were growing at 2 3% they were vibrant economies there you could be confident about your future in these western world countries including us canada uk australia and europe now we are even worried about whether our government will be able to pay pensions also or not because that is what you were supposed to get once you become old a state is supposed to take care of you whether it is medically till you go into your uh, older years or uh, or once you start retiring that the government will be able to pay but most of these places you are finding that you know uh, governments are actually going towards becoming bankrupt or the value of money is devaluing very very fast which is leading to more and more nris because nris whether we like it or not have the highest per capita gdp in us okay on a on a demographics basis okay they are the ones who have already started thinking about of having a nest egg outside of what they are already having it in in a places like us and canada earlier they used to invest in indian real estate but now because of the policies which government is having money is moving from real estate to financial markets so i believe lot of nri monies over the next couple of years 2 3 4 years will start moving from western world assets to indian assets so this will this is not even started this is not people think people are talking about it but people are uh, having inertia complacency as of now but it is almost on the verge of breaking that you say no i can see what you're talking about so i want to think in that particular can we have an sips in the name of our kids you know in india i'm having those kind of conversations already now okay so this was the first part sorry second part you talked about the services part now i wrote about the services services will not go away and actually i missed one part of services which i should have actually uh, mentioned but i later on mentioned in one of my tweets is global capacity centers global capacity uh, so software is where you will find certainly that employment will generation will not happen because of the new technologies which are coming but global capacity center is going to become a massive theme in coming years you will find lot of even uh, companies across sectors which are setting up global capacity centers so they are taking away the jobs from uh, uh, you know uh, the one offshoring job they had given to the software companies and they are bringing the job back the same job back to their own global capacity centers where they could keep all the data within their own company i know of the big fives which are having some uh, you know jobs in canada and us okay they are thinking of putting up their own capacity centers in india which lot of companies are already doing it so you will find that gcc will continue to do well in manufacturing the most important thing in manufacturing is i do not play or i do not get into the theme which everybody can look at it for manufacturing you require electricity any country which wants to manufacture needs electricity now we are having two more headwinds for and there is no uh, energy poor rich country in the world there are only energy rich rich countries in the world so you need to be energy rich to become a rich country in the world otherwise whatever we are talking today will have will not fructify into what we are you know rising per capita gdp or other thing so for me the easiest thing to play for this manufacturing is actually electrification and now i am having two more things in this thing not only that we require more electricity for manufacturing uh, a little bit climate change is happening so again ai related uh, demand for electricity is going up and there is third more thing which which is going to be massive in india i do not know whether we can capture that market or not that is data centers 
25% of all the global uh, data is, is generated in India. Why do we have less than 2% of data centers in India? It, isn't it our data? Why should our data be in the servers in United States or in other part of the world? So the policies are being made in such a way that those data has to be kept in India, and that means more demand for electricity from data centers. So it is what you see in front of you is what everybody sees. But I believe money is not made, big money is not made in the first derivative. You have to look at around that, what is the best way of doing that thing. So you can say there are hundreds of themes in manufacturing, but whether it, any part in manufacturing, any part of you becoming rich and having more AC at home or you know, using your electric vehicle at night, which is not supposed to be good for transformers, or you need more AI-related electricity demand or data centers-related electricity demand, the entire electrification ecosystem I'm writing for the two years, last two years, and it continues to do well. So this is one part which I'm very, very bullish. The second part is defense tech. Uh, all these tech-related work, actually, is not going to be in US. It is actually being transferred to India. This, uh, so that is why I believe that defense tech, whatever you are finding in defense, I'm not talking about defense manufacturing. I'm talking about the tech part. So the tech part of defense, where you have massive amount of large number of engineers working on the defense technologies, a lot of small, 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 small things, those parts will do well. The third part is where I believe Indian government will have massive impetus in coming years, which will, which will be uh, in uh, um, uh, tourism. Why? Because I looked across the sectors, there is only one sector which can employ large number of people in India, and that is tourism sector. And now you have created basic infrastructure for your tourism sector to do well, whether it is leisure tourism, whether it is medical tourism, or whether it is religious tourism. So I believe these three sectors have stayed for the last two years. I'm not able to expand to, although I wrote about pharma in the morning today, I'm not able to expand to that because my understanding is very, very limited over there. And in having a limited bandwidth, this is what I'm able to see. I'm invested and I'm very happy with with whatever investments I'm having. So data in, data centers is actually interesting given, I think we've heard a couple of things from the government in terms of moving, uh, uh, you know, Indian related data back to back to the domestic markets. I don't know if, uh, so, so what you're seeing is there would probably be more regulatory announcements on that front and that really blows up the market, right? That could be the way that actually unfolds. And uh, the other one which you're talking of is power, uh, which is electricity. And we've gone through this entire thematic around electric vehicles. There is some talk of a slowdown in the EV market and, you know, sort of loss of interest. Uh, and uh, the thought that, well, uh, we may have to eventually move towards nuclear energy. Yep. You know, and is that the way forward? And is then everyone going to slowly move away from this whole idea that, you know, we need to move from fossil fuels to, you know, some other format. And now now it's going to be only nuclear that everybody's going to explore because that's the only scalable uh, uh, source which, which, may, which will not damage the... Uh, world as such so uh, what i think has no meaning Arohit. what my government thinks where yeah. i invest is what matters to me because i if i cannot go into the justification of what being right or wrong i have no view on that thing so like mr biden wants clean and green energy and mr trump says bullshit let's go back to the fossil fuels right indian government is yeah. very very clear about clean and green energy transition Every time you listen to Mr. Nitin Gadkari, you get a very clear idea of the government thinking. Again, I'm saying I'm not going to do the rights and wrongs. I have no views over there. We will continue our transition or make policies in such a way that EV continues to become a big part of the market. Although, whether it works or not, we will come to know with the time whether the adoption is higher or not. But EVs have to be plugged in at night. So you, might be, you might be interested to know that those transformers, which work for the full day, are supposed to cool down at night. Every transformer has a 25 to 30 years life. But when you start you know, plugging your EVs at night, the same transformer has a three year life left because you're not allowing it to cool off. So I'm just giving a small example of if you want more EV, then please be ready for more transformers. It's a very simple thing. Second thing about nuclear energy. 
per gigawatt energy created out of nuclear is one of the lowest cost in India. And in US, it is four times that of India. The largest number of nuclear energy engineers in the world are actually in India as per Louis gave of Gavekar. Till five years back, a lot of global interest in the form of uh, NGOs and global organization did not want India to be energy independent. And that is what I will do if I'm a global hegemon. I will not, I will want India to be dependent upon me. And I will make conditions in such a way that India does not go the nuclear way. But over the last four or five years, what we've done is we've slowly got away with those NGOs which did not allow us uh, to become energy independent. And if anybody wants to know what India has gone through, then you should read Confessions of an Economic Hitman. What these multilateral agencies have did to various parts of the world, and you will be able to visualize what they did to India over the last few years. Now those NGOs don't exist. There are 52 nuclear power plant in construction in the world as of now. 26 of them are in US, uh, sorry, in China. 15 of them now in India and actually zero in the US. But the best clean and green energy in the world is nuclear energy. Everybody has understood that thing. Fukushima is behind us. Technology has become much, much more robust. So I believe nuclear is the lowest hanging fruit and India is already having those 15, 16 under construction. So again, I would say over here, you are absolutely right that we should be focusing only on nuclear energy or let me put it there, focusing major part of uh, you know, energy on nuclear energy for the energy sustainability. If we do not have cheap and cheap and reliable energy, you will not become a manufacturing, you will not your manufacturing GDP as a percentage of GDP will not go up at all. Today you might not be yes, so, so therefore it's a, just, it's a necessary. It's thing. necessary. It's a necessary Five percent of all the Maharashtra's uh, 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 electricity is consumed by data centers already. Hmm. Where is the energy? So that means that that's one sector that will continue to remain on the on the run as everyone will have to really expand capacity in the energy zone. But how much time would all of this take? So it definitely takes time if you have to invest in uh, new capacities, uh, setting up a nuclear plant has its own timeline. Uh, uh, I'm not sure to what extent a lot of that work has already happened uh, in India. So uh, Rohit, under construction, I do not know at what stages it is there. Okay. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, I derive my view of India by listening to what is happening globally. Okay, even the electrification theme came from what is happening in US. In India also, we pick up almost the same policies. What are you finding in the electrification theme? What India is struggling with because India wants to become a manufacturing powerhouse. US exactly is doing becoming its own way and it wants to become a manufacturing powerhouse exactly at the same point of time which India wants to. What US is struggling on the electrification side and what are the timelines over there from transformers to cables and all those things, the same thing is applicable to India. Only India has gone completely the nuclear way in addition to the other parts of electrification. US is still thinking about whether to go ahead or that or not, although they've recently passed a regulation. Now it takes almost five to seven years for a nuclear power plant to come into uh, you know, operation. So let me put it this way that four or five years, you will not be having that kind of clarity on the energy security, which you are talking mm -hmm. about. And there is one more thing which is happening that hydropower in Western world at least, because of the drought situation and because of, uh, you know, uh, because of the climate change, uh, you're not able to generate the same kind of uh, output from hydro in Western world. I have not looked at India's number, whether it is true for India also or not. Yeah, one very interesting chart since you mentioned medical tourism I'm seeing in your presentation is it almost doubles from 2023 to 2029, more than doubles, I think, in terms of size of business. Uh, so that sort of puts the entire focus on the hosp hospital sector uh to really get that growth from not just domestic but uh global 
uh, participation in terms of people coming here uh, and getting the cost advantage yeah actually but most of these companies you can already see a massive private equity participation over there that most of these large companies are having a very very significant interest from private equity i'm talking about india is so cheap on medical side actually you can uh, and canada yeah, i'm giving give you an example of canada it's not i'm i'm showing it in a bad light but the medical system has completely collapsed over here where if you need a re- rheumatologist or you know appointment it is 6 months or 1 year away you, you know so that is a problem yeah. in us actually uh, if you do not have a uh, you know uh, if you get uh, you know uh, people go to mexico actually to get their appointments done and then come back to uh, come back to canada so what you are finding is india the medical is so so cheap okay and so readily available that india will be attracting medical tourism uh, which already is happening from middle east to india will happen from other parts of uh, nearby countries where india will become a major destination what you need it was airports and roads you have already have very good doctors and now you can see the number of airports which you've created in small small places where you can have directly have international flights and people can come and go to those uh, medical centers which are obviously now in a much much better quality than what it was 10 years back so you will have a massive amount of foreign exchange earnings coming to india how much is this? So there is an ecosystem which is getting developed more and more people will get jobs it's just that i uh, you know people say i cannot see it i cannot see it if you could have seen it then it then it would have been completely discounted in the market you have to visualize that this thing can happen so so now now that we we set you set clarity in terms of what uh, segment uh, one needs to be in uh for the people here in terms of investors and this this is like i said right at the beginning the most common question should i invest now you know when i say okay markets bullish all this is happening you have liquidity coming in and so on uh, uh and people's question to should you just invest now uh what 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 would what would you suggest as the right approach uh, for people to really take so if i'll tell you from my experience and i am not a registered financial advisor first let me put it very clearly over here till now if you if if you've made a good amount of money let's say uh, in single different stocks and all and you are finding it very uncomfortable over here then better to give your attention to the fund managers give to the mutual funds okay if you want to take it out from there you are very becoming uneasy over there you are, you are having no control over uh, you know the valuation that run up i have made good amount of money which most of the people in uh, retail investors have made zero da has a chart on that thing okay so uh give it to the fund managers give your attention to the fund managers because in this kind of environment they will be very prudent with your money secondly if i have to invest in india today i am telling everybody have a 18 to 24 months fcp and go for a flexi cap fund don't go for a small mid cap or a sectoral fund at this point of time give money to the fund manager let him decide what part of the market he likes and let him take the call on that i have already created a basket of portfolio uh, you know funds i started put it on nris in in january based on my thinking process ki this will happen in india and i put that basket so some, yesterday uh, advisor coach which had created that basket for us wrote an independent uh, article on that subject how that basket has done so you can actually invest in the, through that basket also to particular fund managers which are in same alignment of the views which i am having because i picked up the same fund managers you know i want this fund managers who was having this particular percentage as a part of his portfolio and obviously over the last six months those funds have really well performed so this is my thinking process having said that thing i would keenly wait for the budget because th- this is where rohit i have a little bit difference of opinion from you i think the governments and regulators matter more than what they ever mattered uh, in the history i have i think from the government point of view for them they want job creation they are very very clear about it and they don't like speculation yeah they are, they are also clear on our regulators are very clear on the speculation part and my government is very clear for the last two years i am trying i am not able to get job creation done although in bits and pieces it is happening but it is not showing up in the numbers as of now without job creation okay you absolutely no have no future as an economy okay you will not become a global powerhouse which you keep on talking about so for me if the focus is only on these two things 
then you have a very clear path in front of you. Yeah, what kind of bubble we are talking about? What exactly is you know going to happen? You're predicting. Every bubble goes for a parabolic rise. The parabolic rise always happen in the last few months of the uh, few months of the market. Till that point of time, it is not a parabolic rise. I think Rohit has written a very good uh, uh, long short report recently, two days back, on which he is having some numbers. Now I am not going to uh, be talking about numbers, but that gives you a fairly good idea about what a bubble can look like. Yes, so so stop in King. Essentially, what we are saying is that we are in that field, and and in fact, for sometimes it's said that a lot of money gets made uh, riding these bubbles. But you have to know that if if it gets out of hand, then at the end it also hits, you know, falls on your face. Uh, we are not there yet, and uh, which is what we are trying to navigate. <coughs> what Ritesh tried to explain earlier is that if we do manage to get a good consolidation over the next fifteen to eighteen months, it would actually set us up for. a much uh, bigger uh, you know exponential curve for india and uh, that is that is his best uh, possible case in terms of outcome are you talking about just the share market <laughs> or the crypto market too no no we only talking of the uh, of the stock market shiva marora uh, hi rohit sir hi ritesh sir uh, sir uh... Uh, मैं ये जानना चाह रहा था आपका ना मैंने uh, चार पांच दिन पहले भी एक यूट्यूब सेशन सुना था एंड uh, वो काफी बेनिफिशियल था नॉलेज के हिसाब से सर uh, मैं ये जानना चाहता हूँ जैसे आपने बताया कि न्यूक्लियर सेक्टर एनर्जी सेक्टर या पावर सेक्टर सर हमको क्या uh, किस तरीके से इन्वेस्ट करना चाहिए स्टॉक स्पेसिफिक या किस तरीके से इन सेक्टर्स में uh. स्टॉक का तो मैं आपको नहीं बता सकता हूँ मैं आपको ये बता सकता हूँ कि न्यूक्लियर ऐसा भी नहीं है कि न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट आप खरीदो और उस पर यू कैन मेक बिग मनी बट द इंटायर इको सिस्टम ऑफ व्हाट गोज इनटू मेकिंग अ न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट इज दिस दिस वैल्यू चेन इज दैट दिट विल डू वेरी वेल है ना जो चीजें लगती हैं एक न्यूक्लियर पावर प्लांट बनाने में वो सब चीजों में इज वेयर द फोकस शुड बी इन माई व्यू और सर आपने जैसे बताया कि आ, मोदी गवर्नमेंट ने भी पहले ब्यूरोक्रेट्स को सुना अभी मतलब जैसे थर्ड टर्म है उतना अच्छा मेजॉरिटी नहीं आया सारे आ, स्टेट्स में फ्रीबीज बांटने का कोशिश चल रहा है तो अभी ये गवर्नमेंट सर वाकई में मैक्रोज में फोकस करेगी कि लॉन्ग टर्म इंडिया को लेके जाना है या कि नहीं सरकार बचानी भी है और अगली बार आना भी है इस चक्कर में फ्रीबीज के पीछे ही चले जाए सर दो आंसर दूंगा इसके में आपका आर्ग्यूमेंट बिल्कुल सही है बट मैंने एक चार्ट ये भी डाला था जी सेवन कंट्रीज बड़ी कंट्रीज में इंडिया इज द ओनली कंट्री जहां पर एक प्राइम मिनिस्टर तीसरी बार आ रहा है लोग दूसरी बार भी नहीं आ रहे हैं ओके सो मैं छोटा सा एग्जांपल आपको देता हूं। इन्वेस्टर्स क्या देखता है uh, एक एग्जाम्पल है जब ऋषि सुनाक वॉज प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ यू उन्होंने बोला नॉर्थ सी में ड्रिलिंग करते हैं ऑयल के लिए एंड ही ही वांटेड टू डू द राइट थिंग फॉर हिस कंट्री क्या ड्रिल करते हैं ऑयल हम लोग क्यों इंपोर्ट करते हैं हमारे पास ड्रिलिंग करते थे नाउ द न्यू प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज कम एंड ही सेज स्टॉप ऑल द ड्रिलिंग परमिट्स सो क्या हुआ पॉलिसीज चेंज हो रही हैं हर जगह लाइक यू में भी प्रेजिडेंट बाइडन वॉन्ट्स क्लीन एंड ग्रीन एनर्जी प्रेजिडेंट ट्रंप वॉन्ट्स फॉसिल फ्यूल हर जगह पॉलिसीज आर चेंजिंग इंडिया में एटलीस्ट पॉलिसीज चेंज नहीं हो रही है दैट इज द वन थिंग and i do understand aur main manta hu ki ho sakta hai ki freebies diya jaye ho sakta hai diya jaye to isliye again coming back to this thing aapne apna answer khud hi diya hai wait for the budget no budget aapko bata dega ki kya hum log macro ki taraf dhyan de rahe hain kya desh ko badhane ki taraf dhyan de rahe hain ya fir we have gone back to the same old way of giving subsidies to people to buy votes aapko same answer mil jayega budget ke andar ye cheez your Uh, yes uh, thank you uh, we are discussing making of a bubble and uh, as you said all bubbles will burst at one point of time or the other but if uh, in our case if the underlying assets are uh, real they are not paper assets then uh, will it be an unmaking of a bubble because uh, if indian stock market has done well then uh, the companies which are doing well are real companies so what will be that unmaking of a bubble for indian uh, Uh, stock market thank you 
that's a that's a very good question i will uh, rohit uh, you want to answer or should i answer on this yeah. thing no no please okay. go on yeah let me tell you uh, ultimately a stock price is a function of eps into pe right that's a very simple way of looking at things everybody will know uh, or all the analysts will know eps of most of the companies which are in their investment universe which are but most possibly most of them will not have any view on the pe multiples when i'm talking about a bubble yes eps can continue to grow and it has to grow but at some point of time pe multiples will be unsustainable it will be unsustainable at some point of time okay and once it becomes unsustainable at given point of time at that point of time eps will continue to grow but the pe multiples contract so i am looking at pe multiples expanding and pe multiples contracting i'll give you a small example without getting name one of the best nbfcs in the sector went from two time price to book to eight time price to book over the last what 7 8 years till 2 3 years back it had went it had a very good run very good run some of the banks went from one time price to book to 4 5 6 and we were justifying six times price to book but from that time onwards for the last 6 years the prices have not gone anywhere where the eps has more than doubled did you see an unmaking of a bubble over here nothing has nothing wrong has happened it just that the pe multiples have contracted for me making of a bubble means pe multiple expansion and at some point of time the pe multiples cannot expand irrespective of rising eps and pe multiples starts contracting and if they contra- contract sharply in a very short period of time the bubble burst dramatically if they do not you know uh, if they do not uh, contract sharply but goes for a time correction it is possible for after the bubble burst means for 10 years or 15 years the market does not go anywhere it has happened in us 15 years the market did not go anywhere it has happened at many times in different kind of markets that after the so much money was moved into a sector p multiples expanded at some and something happened where the p multiples money moved out of that thing and moved into another bubble then the p multiples contracted for 15 20 years it depends upon ki what is our starting point japan bubble was the worst bubble in the recent time where it took 40 years for nikkei to come back to the same level what it was in 1989 okay pushkaraj uh, sir metal sector par aapka koi view hai काफी लंबे समय से ये सेक्टर परफॉर्म भी नहीं कर रहा है पर्टिकुलरली सेल और टाटा स्टील कोई रिटर्न नहीं मिल रहा इनमें मैं आपको स्टॉक के बारे में नहीं बोलूंगा मैं आपको स्टॉक के बारे में नहीं बोल सकता मैंने आपको जैसे भी बोला सो आई विल कीप द स्टॉक आउट मैं आपको सेक्टर के बारे में बोल देता हूं जो मेरी व्यू है वन बेल्ट वन रोड के आसपास मैसिव डेवलपमेंट हो रही है 3.6 बिलियन पीपल आर सीइंग इंक्रीज इन पर कैपिटा जीडीपी from indonesia to turkey forget the western world this is a new area of development over the last two years china is going through a time correction unka bubble burst hua hai na housing ka wahan par sabko ek hi cheez aati thi housing mein paisa dalna to unka bubble dheere dheere deflate ho raha hai to jab unka bubble dheere dheere deflate ho raha hai jo sabse bade buyer the okay commodities ke aapne dekha hoga commodities crash nahi hui they are going through a period where you are seeing a time correction okay now we are seeing a ab hum naya nayi cheez dekh rahe hain jahan par over ke aas pass countries are becoming rich people want to become rich new infrastructure is getting developed look at indonesia thailand uh, countries around you turkey massive infrastructure is getting developed even india mein bhi aap dekh rahe i believe metals and then there is one more angle of ev एडॉप्शन होता है नहीं होता मुझे नहीं पता देन देयर इज एंगल ऑफ ग्रीन एनर्जी वो ऑल दीस थिंग्स पुट टुगेदर टेल्स मी एंड इफ यूएस वर टू गो फॉर इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन आई बिलीव दिस मेटल है दिस सेक्टर सेक्टर एज अ होल हैज अ गुड रनवे इन अहेड ऑफ अस कब होगा मैं नहीं बोल सकता एवरीथिंग गोस थ्रू टाइम करेक्शन श्रीराम हाय Hello. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity. 
Yeah, uh, actually, you know, yeah. since we were discussing about Japan and bubbles, so, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, I was just uh, looking at, uh, you know, few data points, you know, that Japan in 1989, you know, had a market cap to GDP at 1.4, you know, and China in 2007 was around 1.7. Today, we are probably more than 1.4. So, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, if probably markets are going to, go up by another 20-30%, then are we actually looking at a, a long period of uh, time correction or, you know, half a decade of lost returns or something of that sort? What are your thoughts on that, actually? So, I am looking at it in a different way. Either we can have over the next 3-6 months, we go, uh, you know, market cap to GDP expands further, the profits are not able to keep up. Although corporate profit as a percentage of GDP are now at a 14 year higher, just for your information. Okay, they are picking up slowly. The at some point of time, I believe that over the next 18 to 24 months, we will see a consolidation phase. A consolidation phase in the market does not mean that I am going more towards time correction rather than a price correction. And in that time correction, you will have you know, fundamentals which will catch up for for you to justify the current valuation, which will look okay to you, and then you will be riding it for the next five, six years. At that point of time, it could be 180% of the GDP, 200% of the GDP, I do not know. US market cap to GDP today is around 180%. Yeah. True. So it is possible. In today's time, where are the growth areas? Tell me a growth area outside of US and India. Which country will you invest? Where you think about the macro? You, uh, uh, Japan is a different animal altogether. Japan is debasing its currency, so value of assets goes up. There are only three countries which are having a bull market as of now, according to few different people I'm talking. I talk to US, India, and Japan. Only three people. US is obviously because of only concentrated tech sector, right? Uh, uh, Japan is only because of the currency debasement. India is the only one where you are finding more and more a large part of market participating in this thing. There is no other country in the world. Yeah. So, Ritesh is actually triggers me to ask one more question, which is that recently, and because I'm looking across the emerging market space, uh, we have seen some pickups starting to happen in places like Brazil, a lot of the Asian markets also, Korea, Taiwan. Oh. Uh, so, do you think something is happening in the EM space or it's just, uh, uh, I don't know, is it just liquid, liquidity or just moving with the rest of the markets? Look, the problem is that Brazil was one of my favorites because of 500 basis point of real uh, positive rate. But after President Lula has come, he's changed the completely different policies and he's gone back to the socialist way, which markets are reacting. But I strongly believe that there is a massive amount of bull market starting to develop around this over road countries, starting with Indonesia. Indonesia is a great prime example of where the money could be moved. Second, I'm very, very, I'm very bullish on Africa. I'm very bullish on uh, GCC countries. Africa, they are throwing their colonial masters out, getting competitive bid inside. Okay, they have the resources, young population, and they are inviting company. They are inviting both US, China, and India, all three of them, to compete over there create infrastructure for them. So this is Africa for you over the next eight, 10 years. Then second, and very interesting thing is happening in GCC countries. Saudi Arabia used to invest uh, its uh, dollar surplus into US treasuries to keep US interest rate low so that US consumer could consume more because it was having US military umbrella. Now, whether it is UAE or whether it is um, uh, Kuwait or whether it is Bahrain or whether it is Oman or Saudi Arabia, they are no more reinvesting their surpluses into the US economy or in Europe. They are actually reinvesting their surpluses in developing their own economy. In fact, Saudi Arabia will be having a 4 to 5% GDP growth rate. So, yes, you are right. As soon as we start seeing more and more of money not moving to US to fund US deficits and this money finds other way, other places to invest, that is where slowly the bull market will go. Liquidity. Sumit, uh, Sumit Agarwal. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. 
सर मैं किस पूछना चाह रहा था जैसे इंटरेस्ट रेट नीचे जाते हैं तो जनरली मैंने सुना है कि मेटल्स के प्राइजेस ऊपर आते हैं तो फिर वो मेटल्स के प्राइजेस ऊपर आएंगे तो फिर वो इन्फ्लेशन नहीं पैदा करेंगे तो वो साइकिल चलता रहेगा ओके बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है और बहुत ही अच्छा क्वेश्चन आपने पूछा अगर मेटल प्राइजेस ऊपर आ रहे हैं ओके okay, और अगर हम लोग उसे डॉलर में अगर बाय कर रहे हैं उस मेटल को तो इन्फ्लेशन आ जाएगी इंडिया का हमेशा का प्रॉब्लम था ना ऑयल जब ऊपर जाता था और हम लोग डॉलर में खरीदते थे तो सबसे पहले जाकर जब भी ऑयल ऊपर जाता था हमारे रिजर्व बैंक आकर यू नो इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ा देता था और हमारी जी ग्रोथ रेट जो होनी चाहिए थी उससे कम होती थी करेक्ट अब आप सोचो चाइना अपना ऑयल जो है रशिया से या उसे ये सऊदी अरेबिया से यूआन में ले रहा है या फिर इंडिया 40 बिलियन डॉलर या 30-40 बिलियन डॉलर इंडिया और रशिया ने ऑलरेडी बोल दिया ना 100 बिलियन डॉलर का ट्रेड होगा दोनों के बीच में राइट नहीं हम लोग थोड़ी उसे कुछ बेच सकते हैं हम तो दस बिलियन डॉलर भी नहीं बेच पाएंगे बट नब्बे बिलियन डॉलर का हम लोग ऑयल लेंगे हम लोग ऑयल किस करेंसी में लेंगे अगर यूएसडी में अगर समझ लो आप यूएसडी में लेते थे और ऑयल ऊपर होता था आपकी करेंसी टूट जाती थी जैसे ही करेंसी टूटेगी इन्फ्लेशन आ जाएगी जैसे ही इन्फ्लेशन आएगी इंटरेस्ट रेट ऊपर चले जाएंगे राइट right? ये सिंपल है ना सिंपल मैथ करेक्ट अब आप सोचो ऑयल नब्बे गया या सौ गया बट आपने डॉलर में नहीं पे करा आपने उसे आई में पे करा समझो एक फोर्टी थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर ऑयल यू पे इन आई और यू डू पे इन नॉन यूएसडी आपकी यूएसडी आई एन आर पे और आपकी रिजर्व पे कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा बट आप ज्यादा रुपया दोगे उसको रशिया को रशिया के पास ज्यादा रुपया होगा ना और वो रुपया से वो आपकी चीजें खरीदेगा करेक्ट तो जब तक सत्तर से नब्बे सौ डॉलर तक ऑयल है ना अभी मेरे को कोई चिंता भी नहीं है जब तक आप आप जैसे ही बायपास कर जाते हो ना यूएसडी में यू स्टॉप डिपेंडिंग अपॉन यूएस डॉलर और यू नो इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ग्लोबल एसेट मार्केट ग्लोबल कमोडिटीज ऑन योर जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट ऑन योर मैक्रो ये बहुत बड़ा गेम चेंज हुआ है ये 2022 के यूक्रेन रशिया वॉर के बाद का चेंज है इंडिया का मैक्रो का आप सोचो आप सऊदी अरेबिया से ऑयल खरीदते हो और आप सऊदी अरेबिया को बोलते हो ये रे रुपया सिंस तू तो रशिया नहीं है तू तो हमारे यहाँ इन्वेस्ट कर सकता है तो 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 सऊदी अरेबिया या यू आकर बोलता है यार मेरे को इंडिया में पचास यू नो चार पाँच लाख करोड़ का प्रोजेक्ट दिखाओ मुझे बीस पचास हजार करोड़ नहीं इन्वेस्ट करना है मुझे चार पाँच लाख करोड़ करना है और उसे क्यों करना है यंग पॉपुलेशन है बारह टके का नॉमिनल जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट है दुनिया में हर जगह पॉपुलेशन ना ओल्ड होती जा रही है जहां ओल्ड होती है पॉपुलेशन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम कैनेडा यू नो अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वो लोग क्या करते हैं उन या जापान उनको एसेट्स चाहिए जो कैश फ्लोइंग एसेट हो जहां पर वो अपनी ओल्ड एज पॉपुलेशन का ध्यान रख पाए करेक्ट सो दे आर ऑल गोइंग टू इन्वेस्ट इन कंट्रीज लाइक इंडिया इन रियल इकोनॉमी एनुटी एसेट्स जो आज सीपीपी कर रहा है इंडिया और कनाडा के रिलेशनशिप बहुत खराब है बट कनाडा कनाडा पेंशन प्लान स्टिल कंटिन्यूज टू बाय इंडियन एसेट्स इंडियन रोड एसेट्स फॉर एनुटी ओल्ड एज पॉपुलेशन सो आई एम से टू थिंग अगर मेरा ऑयल का प्रॉब्लम खत्म हो जाए जो मैं रूपी में ले पाऊं टू सम एक्सटेंट और दूसरा आई हैव क्रिएट एंड दिस मनी कैन बी यूटिलाइज जो वो मेरे से रुपया लें टू इन्वेस्ट इन आर इकोनॉमी आज से पंद्रह साल पहले शायद एक ही बैंक होता था इंडिया में जिसमें आप आई अकाउंट खोल सकता था एक फॉरेन कंट्री आज आरबीआई ने 37 बैंक्स को 37 बैंक्स को अलॉट करा है कि तुम अपने आप ऑस्ट्रो अकाउंट खोल लो यानी कि ये कंट्रीज कैन बांग्लादेश कैन ओपन एन अकाउंट विथ लेट से यूको बैंक इन आई शायद वो दूसरी बात है कि बांग्लादेश हमें कुछ एक्सपोर्ट नहीं करता बट बांग्लादेश को हम लोग लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट दे देते हैं ये रहे तेरे पांच हजार करोड़ हमने तेरे को चौबीस हजार करोड़ की लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट सार्क को दिए ये रहे तेरे पांच हजार करोड़ ये पांच हजार करोड़ यूको बैंक के पास आई में रखे हैं बांग्लादेश एनी टाइम इट हैज एनी टाइम इट वॉन्ट्स इट कैन यूज दैट पांच करोड़ टू बाय इंडियन गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस 